Welcome back to another Saturday here in my office, and I'm really enjoying this time that we get to spend together, and I hope that you are too. I hope that there's something for everybody. I hope that there's some something there for whatever stage you are in your life, even the kids. I hope you're enjoying the family heirlooms and that kind of thing. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to be talking about excess. And, you know, we live in a society here in America in 2023 where there's a lot of excess, right? We all have, uh, I mean, a lot, there's a lot of people with a lot of money spending it on all kinds of crazy things. And uh, we even as believers kind of get caught up in it sometimes. And it's hard for us to, to just stop and take a step back and remember uh, that we don't really belong here on earth and we don't really belong mixed up in all the materialism and the excess of our world. Well, we belong somewhere else. And uh, it really helps at those times to, to repent and just say, God, I don't, I don't want it to be like this. I don't want it. I don't want to get caught up in all that excess. And so that's, that's just something that we're going to talk about more in depth tomorrow. And it makes me remember our mission statement, right? Our mission statement here at St. John is connecting our neighbors to true riches in Jesus because our neighbors, our whole world, gets so caught up in earthly riches. We want to focus on on true riches. And so there's there, we've got our work cut out for us to go out and tell them. But we can't we can't really go out and start preaching to them and and telling them not to get caught up in the excess of earthly riches until we grapple with it ourselves, right? And we come to terms with it. And of course, coming to terms with it as a believer means repenting and saying, God, I don't, I don't want it to be this way and help me to do better. Not that we have to be perfect before we go out and tell people, but how can we lead someone else to repentance unless we've been there first? That's kind of what Lent is all about. But that done, right, now we're going to go out and we're going to share with them that the, the, what we've experienced, which is this, this repentance and this forgiveness. And it's really our job to, to go out there and, and, and there's a harvest out there. God has told us there's a harvest. So today, the family heirloom I want to share with you has actually not been on the shelf this whole time. Uh, I'm wearing it around my neck, and you've probably seen it before because I wear it every Sunday at the 815 service at least. Uh, I don't wear it at the 11 o'clock service, so maybe if, uh, if you've never been to the 815 service, you've never seen it, but I wear it every Sunday at the 815 service, and this is one of my most treasured possessions. Uh, probably not worth a whole lot uh, financially, you know, monetarily, but um, it, this cross was, was my grandfather's, and he bought it in Jerusalem in the 50s when he went to visit. And then um, he passed away when I was two. He gave it to his son, my uncle, who then gave it to me when I was ordained. And so you can just imagine, this has just incredible sentimental value to me. And it, it's, a, it's a funny shaped cross, right? It's, a, uh, it's, it's square. It's called the Jerusalem cross. The Jerusalem cross, cross has one big cross in the center and then a small cross in each of the four corners. So there's five crosses total. And it's referred to as the Jerusalem cross. And this particular version has a ruby inside. And, and the ruby is chosen here because it's red. It, red is color of the Reformation. And so I think my, my grandfather, being a Lutheran pastor, was very much attracted to this, uh, this cross because it was, had the color of the Reformation. But also because the Jerusalem cross is the cross of evangelism. The Jerusalem cross is the symbol of us as believers going out and telling other people. And my grandfather was big into evangelism and missions. And he, uh, he started a mission plant that then um, when he passed away, my father took over. And then I was the youth pastor at that church. So total between the three of us, we served that church for 81 years, 81 years. And, uh, and, and that, that started off as a mission church, and now it's a church that's uh, quite like St. John, actually, about the same size, about the same culture, and very missional and very, very focused on, hey, we got to tell other people about what we've experienced, this, this repentance and this grace and the forgiveness and salvation that we've experienced. And uh, so I, I want to read a Bible verse to you today. This is from 1 Thessalonians Chapter 4, it's verse 11. Make it your ambition to lead a quiet life, 
to mind your own business and to work with your hands, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders and so that you will not be dependent on anybody. And St. Paul is encouraging us to live an entire life that is an outreach to others, that is a light to the world. And so uh, keep that in, t in mind today as you watch this video. Lord, I have only this one small seed, an embarrassment really, but you say, put it in the ground. On my knees, in this barren field, I scrape at the earth, digging its grave. Skeptical of your promise that what goes into the ground doesn't have to stay. And over here, she has a bottle of costly perfume, poured out in thanks and worship, losing its value as it drips to the floor. And me, shamefully pulling my purse strings tighter. But nothing is wasted that is given to you. We only see the seed. You see the harvest. We see a lost cause. You see a holy sacrifice. We only see sorrow. You see joy. We see muddied hands. You see obedience. The land all around us is your witness and testimony that in you, what dies can live. What's lost is found. Amen.